Hi everyone, I am Dr. Shrikant Raju, Consultant Vascular Endovascular Surgeon and Food Care Specialist, Ashoda High Tech City. And as this is a month of DVT awareness, I am here to present the topic of DVT in front of you. Because the awareness about the DVT is very much less in the general population. Usually DVT can occur in any age group, uh, in either of the sexes and even in athletes. People have a myth that it occurs in only people who are elderly and who are, who are bedridden in those people only these uh, DVT usually occur and it is very rare they feel. But it is not like that. It can occur in any people, in any age group, in either of the sexes. That is the most important thing people should be knowing. And apart from this, one more important thing about DVT is how long should we take a treatment for DVT? So in order to answer this question, I need to be clear in two aspects for you guys. One is whether the patient is having a provoked DVT or an unprovoked DVT. Either of these two DVTs, patient should be treated at least for six months with anticoagulation. During this anticoagulation, the treatment remains safe for the first six months. But after that, whether this treatment should continue for lifelong or not, that decision will be taken on the basis of whether the patient is having a provoked DVT or an unprovoked DVT. So patients who are having a provoked DVT, it's because of the guys who go for a long distance travel or the patients who after a major surgeries, for example, like orthopedic surgeries or a gynec surgeries or a, any sort of abdominal surgeries, post procedure, when patients are bedridden for long time, in such patients, they develop DVT. That's why most of your clinicians, whenever the patient is fit to walk, they give an advice that you can go and walk. So when you follow that advice, there will be no further extension of DVT and the complication of the DVT can be minimized and at the same time you can avoid the DVT also. But in spite of these things, most of the patients by uh, advised by their clinician to have an active mobilization, they don't undergo keeping a myth in their brain that they should not walk. So that's why whenever your clinician asks you to walk, you should walk so that you can avoid this major catastrophic event that is called as DVT, which leading to pulmonary thromboembolism. And coming to unprovoked DVT, unprovoked DVT occurs because of genetic and hereditary factors which is causing uh, the protein, uh, many proteins deficiencies in the uh, blood. For example, like protein C, protein S and uh, antithrombin 3, factor 5 laden mutation. Like this, there are a set of uh, uh, diseases in which the patients uh, uh, are prone to have DVT. In such patients, patients require lifelong anticoagulation. But most of the patients, when they visit a clinician, without getting evaluated whether they come into the provoked category or unprovoked category, they randomly start the dosage which is not suitable for the same for them and at the same time they continue that anticoagulation for a longer time and they stop abruptly without knowing what is the exact cause of the DVT and without knowing what is the exact duration required for the treatment. So these things when you take care you can avoid major catastrophic events because we see patients with unprovoked DVT taking uh, medicines for more than six months, for example, like per se one year or two years and stopping without knowing what is the exact cause. They land up in causing the DVT or occurring the DVT in different parts of their body, which is leading to a life threatening conditions for them. So I advise all the patients to consult a vascular surgeon and get properly evaluated if you are suspecting a DVT and so that they can take exact duration of the course which is required for anticoagulation and if required they can they have to take it for lifelong and when the patient is of provoked category what I advise is patients who are a frequent travelers for long hours in such patients every one one and a half hour they have to walk for a while and then sit so that these uh, uh, catastrophic events of DVT can be prevented. And post-surgical patients, when your clinician feels that you are fit to walk, you should walk and make sure that you are not in, in landing in DVT and its related complication that is pulmonary thromboembolism. Thank you.